EGIF bitches. Thank God it's Friday and we're back with What the Fitness. What the f This week we have your returning WTF champion, Dr. Mark Hyman, with one of my other favorites, Michaela Peterson. Now, this is actually like really funny because I actually like have listened to some of Jordan Peterson stuff and I, a lot of people don't like him, but I actually like some of his stuff, like his talking about life and whatnot. Dietary stuff, trash. Um, also Michaela stuff, trash. But Michaela and I ha had a beef on Twitter a while back in terms of debating evidence on the carnivore diet and her symmetry breaker was that our kids should race and see who wins. You have your, you know, observational data, you have your, you know, mechanistic data from animals, your cohorts, then you've got your like randomized control trials, systematic reviews, and meta-analyses, and then right on top of that is, fuck it, let's have our kids race. There's a video of her interviewing Mark Hyman. It's pretty cringe, so let's check it out. I feel like I have to fucking sneeze. All right, let's go. How do you feel about dairy? I think dairy is a nature's perfect food, but only if you're a calf. It's problematic. About 75% of the global population is lactose intolerant. The dairy we're eating is not the dairy we used to eat. So these cows are often hybridized uh, to be identical. They have a type of casein, which is a protein in milk called A1 casein, which is very inflammatory more likely to cause digestive issues, has been linked to things like osteoporosis, even things like autoimmune diseases, like type one diabetes, cancer. All right, so this is like five lies and a truth. <laughs> if we look at the data on A1 casein, the protein in milk he's talking about, it does appear that A1 casein is responsible for some of the digestive issues that are associated with, with dairy. So for people who have digestive issues, there was one study where they basically switched them to A2 casein and saw that most of the digestive issues with uh, dairy went away. It does appear that A1 casein may be problematic for some people. However, <laughs> his claim that dairy is inflammatory is complete and utter bullshit. So if we look at several meta-analyses and randomized controlled trials examining this that look at systemic markers of inflammation like CRP, IL-6, what they show is that in most cases, they see no difference amongst people who consume low dairy versus very high dairy intake. And if anything, they actually see a slight lowering effect of high dairy intake on these inflammatory markers. So how is dairy inflammatory if we're seeing reductions in these markers? People confuse localized inflammation with systemic inflammation. So for example, if you have lactose malabsorption, and it's important that we say malabsorption and not intolerance, and I'll tell you why here in a second. But if you have lactose malabsorption and you have too much dairy, you will have pain. Now that pain, some of it may be inflammation locally in that area. That is not the same thing as systemic inflammation. Same token, if I fall and I bruise my leg, there will be inflammation and swelling there. That is not the same thing as systemic inflammation. These are two separate issues. So when we talk about inflammation from diet or lifestyle, we're talking about systemic inflammation. We're not talking about localized inflammation. His claim that 75% of people are lactose intolerant is also complete fucking bullshit. Depending on the population assessed, in terms of lactose intolerance, very low. Because lactose intolerance is a clinical condition where you really can't have hardly any lactose at all. Now, there are quite a few people that have lactose malabsorption. In fact, in adults, up to 55% of the global population appears to have some kind of impairment in their ability to tolerate high levels of dairy or lactose. But again, that's not the same thing as an intolerance. A lot of that is driven by specific populations of people. So if we look at what's driving this high number of 55% of the population suffering from lactose malabsorption, about 70% of Middle Eastern people have issues with lactose malabsorption. Over 70% of African Americans have it. And then 79% of Native Americans suffer from lactose malabsorption. So those populations are driving that number higher. But amongst Caucasian North Americans, that number is right around 20%. 
and very similar for most of Europe as well, which is in the 20%. And then if you look at kids, kids have very low levels of lactose malabsorption. It's like zero to 20%, depending on the study you look at. If you have issues with lactose mal... If you have... <laughs> fuck. If you have issues with lact... I gotta fucking stop smiling. Fuck you, Brian. <laughs> so if you have issues with lactose malabsorption, I'm not saying that you should have high levels of dairy or high levels of lactose. In that case, you probably want to avoid it or at least understand what your tolerance is for it. What happens? Well, lactose is a sugar containing glucose and galactose. It's what's called a disaccharide. And when you eat it, digestive enzymes in our gut break it down into those two constituents. Now, in people who have problems with lactose malabsorption, those enzymes have lower concentrations or lower activity. What tends to happen is lactose can reach the large intestine where the bacteria there ferment it and produce gas. And so the pain and discomfort a lot of people get from high levels of dairy is due to that gas. The other thing about the lactase enzyme is it's very inducible. What happens a lot is during childhood, we eat quite a bit of dairy, but as we age and grow into adulthood, we tend to consume lower and lower amounts of dairy. Yes, there could be some like genetic, epigenetic, environmental components that cause us to have lower levels and activity of the lactase enzyme, but it's also probably compounded by the fact that we just consume less of it. So that then if we have a meal that has more lactose or more dairy, we have more malabsorption. If you are somebody who has lactose malabsorption, you can likely train yourself to consume more dairy. What you can do is start at a low amount and slowly build it up as your tolerance allows. Dairy is not inherently bad for you, unless of course you have really bad lactose intolerance, and in that case, just don't consume it. But for those who can consume it, it's associated with all kinds of benefits like better bone mineral density, better lean body mass, more retention of lean body mass. It also is a very high quality protein source. There are benefits associated with dairy and we also talked about possibly lowering inflammatory markers as well. If you have a lot of pain when you eat dairy, by all means, don't eat dairy. But if you are somebody who is interested in being able to consume more dairy and you have lactose malabsorption, you can train yourself slowly to eat more of it I would probably do it under a dietitian's supervision just so it's a little bit easier and they can set you up for success. And for those of you who don't have a problem with dairy, stop worrying about it. The research says it's pretty darn good for you. Now the people out there say, wow, it's associated with cancer. Well, not really. There's a few isolated studies that show it's associated with cancer, but most of those studies are looking at the full fat dairy, which is high in saturated fat. And if you look at the low or no fat dairy, you don't really see those consistent associations. In fact, the vast majority of the studies in a recent meta-analysis showed no association with cancer or actually a reduction in cancer incidence with higher levels of dairy intake. So I'm not saying you have to consume dairy. There are other very, very good sources of high quality protein. But if you like dairy and you want to use it as a protein source, there's no reason you have to cut it out if you don't have uh, digestive issues with it. So this whole fear mongering around dairy, it tends to be from crazy vegans and people like Hyman, who are like these people who just pick foods that are clean and try to fear monger other foods as to why you can't eat them, the ultimate form of food privilege. Anyway, as per usual, if Hyman says something, you can usually be sure that it's bullshit, and if nothing else, probably the exact opposite is true. In this case, he was partially right about one little thing, so let's give him some credit because usually he doesn't get a fucking thing right, so. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Get in those comments. Let me know what you think. I'm sure the anti-dairy zealots will be in there giving their two cents. I don't give a fuck. And I'll catch you next week.